welcome to Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast. This is an actual play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Royalty free music provided by Kevin MacLeod, Plate Mail Games, and Tabletop Audio. And now, to adventure. Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Buckner. I'm the primary dungeon master for Knights of Roleplay and Adventuring Podcast. This is part three of our adventure, Mysteries and Revelations. In parts one and two, the party and the crew of the Star Runner were on their way back from Space Station Omega, traveling to the Rock of Brawl, when they encountered a strange void in space, and at first it was moving to intercept them. And then the ship was enveloped by the void, and it turned out that there was a strange alien being that was sort of gathering information about the party, and after revealing itself and speaking with them, it said it wanted to study the concept of creatures having a limited existence. And to that end, it manifested a creature on the deck of the Star Runner, which the party fought. And during the fight... Janie experienced what was probably her worst nightmare ever, where she had a wild surge, first of all, that caused her hands to be on fire. Although it wasn't hurting her, she couldn't touch anything because it would cause things to catch fire. And then she had another wild surge that caused her to cast fireball on the deck of the ship centered on herself. And um, as you may have heard from some of the previous episodes, part of her history involved hitting a wild surge that created a fireball in her home village, and unfortunately, there were some tragic consequences. And uh, Strax, her brother, spoke with her and tried to calm her, and now the crew is resuming its course back to the Rock of Brawl. So you guys continue on your journey. So uh, three more days, three more days pass as the Star Runner heads back to the Rock. On the morning of the fourth day on Stardate 0304.80, Arvine, as you stand on the deck of the ship, you suddenly receive a vision from Mayahin of what appears to be a wall of ice with something frozen inside. The object inside the ice looks like a large fin with, hey. with uh, four long, narrow sections that end in points with what looks like membranes between each section. If you can picture like what a fin might look like on on a, on, on a fish, they have like those long parts in the okay. middle that kind of make up the structure and then it has the material in between. Okay, so that's the, the fin has all of this. Yeah, it, it looks like a okay. fin. I'm, I'm just trying to describe okay. what you would typically think of as, so as, this, as a fin. Does this look to me like a creature or like a, a a class of ship. Uh, you you don't know. Okay. You don't know. It's it, you're getting this image of it in the ice, so it's it's very hard to see it. Okay. But you can make out the general the general shape of it. Okay. Uh, and as as you get this vision, uh, your attention is drawn to a a small planet that you can see from your current position on the deck of the ship. Okay. And you know that whatever. Um, you know that the object, whatever it is, you know that it is located on that planet. Okay. Do I have any sense of intent as far as what I'm supposed to do with this object? No, no. Some sometimes your visions from Mayheen are a little more driving. You know, sort of like the the space station. You knew there was something evil there okay. that needed to be destroyed. Um, in this particular case, this vision is 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 pretty pretty vague. Okay. But obviously, um, because it's a vision coming from your god, there is some significance to it. Okay. Otherwise, you wouldn't receive the vision. All right. Uh, are are there others from the party on deck right now? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. I kind of like motion to all of them and have them come in and like kind of stand away from everybody. And I say, I just had another vision. That that little planet you see over there, like. There's something there that I think we need to go and check out. It looks like there's a wall of ice with either like a very large 
I don't know, creature ship. It, it looks like a fish. There's a big, huge fin that's sticking out of the ice with a membrane running along it. But I don't think I would have been shown it if there wouldn't be some benefit for us checking it out. So, uh, are, are you game for something like this if I go to Braun and tell him about it? I mean, I mean, I guess most of the repair is done to the ship, uh, yeah. but okay. I don't know how thrilled I am with the idea of just going fishing. Okay. But, uh, I guess it would depend on our supplies and yeah, okay. whether or not the crew would be up for another interesting. Do you want to come with me while I talk to him or do you want me just to go and talk to him on my own? Uh, I think he's already a little leery of me, so probably best that I don't. Okay. Yes. Okay. It, it, well, I look at Matisse and and uh, Janie and say, if either of you guys want to come with me, you're you're welcome to. Uh, I think I'm going to have to tell Bron that what my source is at this point because we haven't been planet side, so I can't continue that charade. Well, that there. well, that's up so, to you. I just was you seemed hesitant at the time so I was just trying to give you a little plausible yeah, well, deniability we, we but... hadn't been traveling as long and we've been through a lot more with this ship at this point so I think I'm going to have to tell him I wonder if so, he would know who our lady is anyway would I he understand if, if he asks for a name we can try to tell him but um yeah. okay well I'm going to talk to Bron uh, if either of you two and I point at the I'll other come two want to come with me uh, Jeannie clings to Strax's side okay <laughs> All right, so Matisse and I go quickly. Is Bron in his cabin or is he elsewhere? Uh, yeah, he's in he's in his cabin. Okay, so knock on the door. Okay, he answers. Yes. And say, uh, can we talk to you about something? Uh, sure. Uh, okay. Why don't you come over into the conference room? Uh, okay. There's a conference room that's right next. Okay, uh, so to, go inside the conference room with him. Yeah, he close the door. The door. Okay, yeah. and, and say, okay, so. I need to explain something to you because it just happened again. Uh, when we went to that space station and I talked about a source, uh, the source is the fact that I occasionally have dreams and visions and those visions are always right. They're given to me by a deity. They're about some things that might happen that I can't stop. And sometimes they're about things that I need to check out or that I can change. So that happened before. And just now, standing on the deck of the ship, there's a small planet that we're kind of passing by right now. And I got a vision of a large object. It could be like a fish-type creature. Or I don't know if it's maybe a ship even. But it's trapped in a wall of ice on this planet. And usually when my deity gives me these, these glimpses of something, it's because there's worth in checking them out. Or she thinks that there's something I can change. So, uh, I see. Um, based on how the space station panned out, like that was legitimate. You know, Mat Matisse has traveled with me for a long time. She knows that the visions don't usually lead me astray. Yeah, uh, they always well, are answers that um, fit the situation at so, hand. I mean, do, would you be game for us to detour briefly to this planet on our way back? Well, I'm curious if there is um, what the reason might have been for you to not reveal the source earlier all right so it's just us in the room and we're sure that there's nobody looking yes in. Uh, yeah and okay. you don't you don't need to make a check to okay to see that he's not he's not hostile all right he's, so, he's genuinely curious um so the reason i hesitate to tell people why i have these visions is because it has something to do with my heritage and my heritage tends to make me a target and put people around me who i care about in danger and basically like i kind of like concentrate for a second and i don't do the full transformation but it starts so like my hair starts to glow the shimmering halo appears like the glimpse of the wings starts to show up but just in that conference room so that I know that not everybody on the crew who I don't trust as much would see it so I, I let it stop and then I kind of sigh and I look at him and I, I ask him do you know what an Asimar is um not particularly no um it means that I have celestial bloodline 
So my guide is a goddess who, you know, gives me visions and missions and things to check out or tells me things that might happen or that I might change because she's trying to use me as a tool for her influence in the world. And and my goddess, uh, who is also his patron, uh, she's a protector. Uh, I, I trust her infinitely. But... If people know about this, uh, because I'm aligned with the gods, then naturally things that are evil, or who maybe just like good money, uh, might use that to target me or anybody who's around me. I see. And I have to wonder if that presents a danger to my ship and my crew. That worries me too, which is why I've been relatively secretive about it up until now. Mm -hmm. And Matisse, you have some connection with this god as well? I do. It's been one that I've been on for a majority of my life. And it's um, something that has caused me to uh, find Arvine and to um, protect her as I have for an untold amount of time. My, my visions actually guided me to my first meeting with Matisse and how we eventually started traveling together. Uh, and your race, Matisse, I am not exactly familiar with. Is there any information that you can share about your, about your race? Well, I am what you would call a diva. I am someone that has lived a thousand lifetimes. I I die and I come back and I have memories of previous times that I've been existed. And these memories help guide me and uh, give me understanding and clarity over things that um, we may encounter from time to time. I see. And, uh... What is it that um, Arvine is describing about the connection between the two of you, if, if it's not too personal of me to ask? Well, very much um, back in my, uh, shall I say, more um, bounty hunter-ish more days, um, she was someone who was, um, I should say, a target that I... I was very interested in uh, acquiring. So unbeknownst to me, however, I did not know the true nature of what power she had in her, uh, her significance to where we are now. So when I met up with her, um, this caused me to turn my back on my former life and when that happened, um, let's just say the person I am now is not the person I was back then. Did you uh, lose one of your many lifetimes because of this? I did. That was quite a sacrifice for Arvine. This is oh. um, this is a very uh, significant thing that you did. And I appreciate the two of you coming to me and uh, being honest about this. And, um, you know, we, we travel around a lot and uh, being on a ship is probably a relatively safe place for someone as yourself, Arvine, who might, who might be hunted. And um, I believe that we can work with this. I feel good about what you have shared with me. I feel that you are both trustworthy and obviously are willing to sacrifice for each other. Um, When I spoke with Strax earlier, after his sister ran off, I didn't know quite what to make of what happened. Do you think that perhaps you could talk with the two of them, maybe have them come and talk with me and have a open, honest conversation such as we are having now and maybe uh, describe to them the 
the um, the way that we have been open and honest here in the hopes that they could have a similar conversation uh, with me? Well, I think we could try, but uh, I do know that whatever has gone on with them, like they call each other brother and sister, like we, we don't, we don't know the reasons for that. And if we did, it wouldn't be our place to say. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Strax and his culture, they seem very secretive. And, and Janie, for her part, seems very hurt by things that have happened in her past. I see. E enough so that she hasn't been comfortable to tell us about it yet, even though, you know, we, we've traveled and been through a lot now. So I, I don't want to force that on her, but for, for your sake, I will try to ask and, and just see what they think. And yes, I would consider them both to be very trustworthy people as we've had to yeah, learn, I mean, learn how to um, interact as well as um, become yeah. team members with them. So, yeah, I'm, I mean, what I can say is that like uh, my, my goddess does give me a very good sense of what, what is good and what is evil. And if she thought that there was a problem with one of the two of them, I, I feel like I would have had a vision warning me by now. So I, I, I do not think that there's anything evil there. I do not think that there is evil there either. And the conversation that the three of us have had, um, there is a lot of honesty and a lot of trust that has been uh, built between the three of us in this conversation. And if you can vouch for Janie and Strax. Um, that is good enough for me, but um, please uh, let them know that I am here if they decide to open up. I also do not want to push the issue. Yeah. Um, they are working probably through something and that is their business, um, but please inform them that we, the three of us, have established trust, and if they ever feel so inclined, that uh, my door is always open. Okay. Thank you. So, all right. Uh, all right, Greg, I mean, um, so... give yourself some inspiration for role-playing, Greg. Yay! Oh, thank you. Yay! <laughs> inspiration all around! Uh, so, so we'll, we'll go and see about talking to them. In the meanwhile, the, the planet, do you think that there's value in checking it out based on what I've seen? Uh, let me see. Uh, Hal? Yes, Captain Braun? <laughs> I love it when you talk to yourself. So awesome. <laughs> All the different voices. It's great. It's a little it. weird. Awesome. Hey, hey. hey, we got the bar again! <laughs> <laughs> Go to the bar! Um, uh, he basically asked... Pocket pocket self? Uh, he he asks he asks her if if she knows um, anything about that planet, and she explains that that it's called uh, the planet is called Phrygia, and it is an ice planet. And um, when he asks about basically taking a detour, she says it would only add a day onto the total journey, okay. uh, and then so then Bron uh, agrees that if you that if if you're following your vision that um, he's okay with with taking uh, with adding a day to go to the planet. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll go do yes, our thing you, and leave, leave you to yours. So thank you very much for your listening and understanding. Uh, and we'll talk to the others and see what they think. Uh, what I've shared with you, I actually haven't shared with them yet either because I do feel protective of all these people who are around me. But I will it, keep it, the it information. Might be time. I'll so. keep the information to myself, Arvine. Okay. All right, thank you. So, hello. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, okay, so um, so basically, Hal changes changes the course of the ship, and you guys start heading toward the planet. Um, do you want to say anything in particular to Strax and Janie now? Do you want to save it till later? I mean, again, Bron um, tried to give you the impression that if you're vouching for the two of them, he's not pushing anything. He's not trying to yeah. break through their boundaries. Um, but if if you want to talk to them about anything, you can. Otherwise. We'll just move I, on to the planet. We probably okay. should. Um, uh, we probably should talk to them uh, again in private, but um, I guess. Where are you guys at at this point? I'm wherever he is. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably still up on the main deck, maybe. Just as I say, out. yeah. If, I'm, if I'm not usually, if I'm not on deck, I'm probably with the turtle, uh, running experiments. Uh, so, right now, we will say I'm on deck. Uh, okay. uh, are you talking about Dimble? Dimble. Uh, Dim- Dimble? Dimble is, um, I think, a, a halfling or a gnome. Oh. I, I didn't have the manifest in front of me. Yeah, the the, the, the quartermaster is the turtle. Ol, uh, <laughs> oh, Olo no. is the turtle. Okay. No, yeah, okay. And Dimble yeah. the gnome, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dimble the gnome. <laughs> Dimble the oh, gnome. Oh, yeah. There you go. Dimble the, the gnome. The <laughs> okay. Say it. Okay, so, so you find Janie and Strax on deck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so kind of ask them, hey, could I, I talk to you guys in private for a little bit? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I don't know. Okay. If you guys want to use the conference room, that's fine. Okay. okay. So, All right. How'd it go? We going fishing? Um, yeah. we are. <laughs> and, and there was part of that conversation with Bron, which makes me feel like I, I need to reveal something to you guys that I haven't been wholly honest about because he knows. And with the fact that we're traveling and fighting together, I feel like it's not fair if you don't at this point. Mm. So basically. The reason why I have visions and I have a goddess who is tied to me, um, it's because of my heritage and I'm not simply a human. And, and I basically do the same thing and show the same partial transformation. So you see this like quasi angelic being standing there instead of Arvine and then I stop it. Uh, does kind of narrow say, his eyes so, and kind of looks so on that one. There is something called an Asimar. And, and that is what I Asimar. am. Asimar. A S S I M A R or A A S I M. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Anyway, I don't care. Um, <laughs> but uh, because I have a connection to the gods and I have celestial blood, then it gives me my visions and dreams for starters, and it gives me other abilities if I use the, the transformation that I started to show you just now. Uh, the reason I don't talk a lot about this with people is exactly what I warned you guys about before, which is that uh, beings who are tied to the gods who are celestial, they become targets for bounty hunters and evil cults and other bad people who would like to hurt the gods. So uh, I, I've only told Bron because he basically journeyed two weeks to a space station based on what I told him. Uh, and, and that builds a lot of trust in my mind. I know that he's a good man. I'm telling you guys because I, I just want you to be aware like I, I try not to use that transformation if I'm anywhere when people would see me because I don't want to put the people who I care about in danger you know I've had people die for me and she kind of like makes a side eye look at Matisse if you're paying close enough attention it, it's just uh, and I don't CFA like that paying close enough but, attention. <laughs> uh, um I'd say he is. Oh, Chris, you're muted. Make 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 perception checks, Janie and Strax. Yeah. That is exactly what I just did. I just made a, uh, a 19 on that. Okay. Yes. So John... Okay. 17 on the die. So... Okay. So, <laughs> so, nice so, job, you guys. So, 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 so the two of you, the two of you, pick up on what she's putting down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So so obviously, I care about you guys. We've been through a lot now at this point. Um, but I also feel like honesty is good and I didn't want Bron to know and you guys to still be in the dark. Uh, and for his part, uh, Bron is a good man and he's very trustworthy. He took everything I told him in stride. He wasn't ready to throw me off the ship, even though I could potentially put his crew in danger too. So you know, I know we haven't talked a lot about whatever brought you guys together and why you're siblings and what happens with magic and everything else. And, and you don't have to, I don't ever want to push that on somebody. But I do want to let you know that he conveyed to me that he's he's willing to trust and he's willing to be open with you guys if you ever decide you want to talk with him. And it's and and, and, and on top of that, I'll tell him exact or tell you exactly what I told him, which is and I look at Janie and I go, Janie, I have a goddess and she tells me when there's evil that I need to hunt down and stop. And, and if she thought you were evil, and I'm kind of like my eyes are almost tearing up at this point, like she would have told me that I needed to stop you. So I do not think that you are evil. The oh. whole... <laughs> well... So that's I just... See, it's you, out there now. <laughs> you see two individual tears start to drip down Janie's cheeks 
as she very slowly loosens her grasp on her brother. <laughs> um, and she walks over to my oh, Matisse. To Matisse? Yeah. To Matisse. And um, puts one hand on either side of, of her face if she can reach. <laughs> She's taller than me. She, she might goes. be able to. <laughs> oh. She bends down. <laughs> and, and she whispers, um, You know, I knew you knew what it was like to be haunted by a past, to have lived more than one life. Yes, child. I know what that's like, and I know how that feels. And know this, that even though your life, your past one, may be something that you're trying to run away from, it's there because it makes you stronger. And I, for my part, am here now because of the fact that I gave in to something that is going to be for a better and greater good. And that was how Arveen and I found each other when I died and that past is now this present. Oh. That was good. So, yeah. Did the we lose Sarah there? Did we lose? She's, oh, she, no. she's, she's frozen. <laughs> oh no, there she is. She moved. Oh, she's back. She's back. <laughs> so never be afraid of who you were in the past, but just use it to make yourself stronger and to I'm glitching. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> and and know that you're, you're a good person, and I see that too. And I, I was also... back. Yep. Oh. <laughs> you're Sorry, you're guys. That's okay. That's uh, oh. right. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, uh, this cat. <laughs> oh, oh, I lost her. Oh, reset. Okay, you're back. All right, there she is. Oh my god, I'm so it's sorry. Okay, guys. that's, that's right. right. Bad timing. Uh, Very bad timing. <laughs> That's all right. Did you want to continue with Sarah? Um, she kisses Matisse on the forehead. Aww. Aww. Thank and you. And she turns to... <sighs> Why can I never remember your name? Arvind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just totally lo- like ruined the mood. Um <laughs> Well, if, if you didn't, that was about two, so don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, it's too many feels for John. <laughs> um, <laughs> she turns to Arvine and she says, um, You're blessed by the gods? I am. That's both a gift and a curse in its way. And, and your goddess does not feel angry with me. No. Maybe my brother was right. I think so. Brother? Mm. Do you think it's time to tell our tale? It's your tale to tell. I don't remember half of it, so if you could tell it for me. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, damn! Come on, John. Bust those role-playing chops. No, no, no. It's, no it, it seriously would have... Strack seriously would have left it to her to, to, to decide. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Because it mostly right. revolves around her. It's, it's her choice, for sure. Right. I think it's time to tell our tale. Well. And I think that's we up should to you. be a captain and... Two. Well. Do you want to tell it to us first, or do you want us to go get Captain Bra? No, I think it's I think it's better that Captain Braun not know for the moment. Well, I can't today say for certain whether or not you, Arvine, would have been deified or sacrificed by our clan. If it makes you, if uh, that kind of puts you puts things in perspective. I don't know a lot about hobgoblins, so you'd have to tell me what your culture is like. Well, there's a lot to tell. Probably not a lot of time to tell it. Suffice it to say, I we had a uh, fairly decent life at the in the uh, hobgoblin caves. The uh, you know, 
I had uh, finished my time uh, on the front lines. I was uh, allowed uh, to retire to to my forge to uh, yeah, simply because I could make uh, some of the best armor and weapons pretty much on the entire countryside. Janie here had always had a gift for a bit of, for a bit of the arcane, and she it's uh was taught to also to uh, to, uh, to fight to defend our village. The and things were going fairly well until we had a bit of an incident. I think. After today, you could pro- or you could probably guess what that incident was. Mm-hmm. Half the village didn't survive. Mm. I've never known what makes it happen. It just happens. Yeah. Yeah. No, even some of our even some of our best mages couldn't figure that one out. Mm. Well, long story sh- to make a long story short. I know, too late. Um, <laughs> Uh, I had uh, I struck a deal with uh, some nearby sh- with some shamans outside of the village, and uh, got and got Janie, my sister, back. Not quite in the same way that she was, uh, and kind of got kicked out of our village for it. Mm. So after this and that, a little bit of wandering around. Here we are. I'm mostly looking for ways to help out Janie with uh, controlling with whatever it is that's going on with her and yeah. she comes along. Well, from what, what you say, it sounds like your people are very warlike and intolerant of those who are I guess you haven't them. met too many cob goblins, have you? Uh, yeah. I, I, like I said, I Suffice don't. Suffice to say, we were both considered very weird. <laughs> so, well, I'd say that's a good thing that you're not like most top goblins, and yeah. I'm honored Janie, to travel. Uh, <laughs> we, we never, we never <laughs> met anybody that wasn't a hobgoblin. So, yeah, well, yeah. Like, it sounds like you had a, cruel. Sounds like you've had a huge burden for a long time, and and I hope you feel better for having told your story, so that you know that you're not alone and and all of us are searching for something and all of us are the same in that way yeah Yeah. well the hard the hard thing is is that uh one thing you need to know about hobgoblin society is that we do value our our clan and our family above all else which is pretty much why I ended up take, uh, getting kicked out by having by essentially choosing Janie over the village. Mm. Well, I'd make the same choice again if I had to, I suppose. But eh, that's what's kind of what put us on the run. Mm. I don't know where I was going with that. That's okay. Oh, well, I, I think I'm, I'm glad that you made the choices you did and I'm honored to travel with someone who would do so much for his sister uh, uh, we're both honored yeah, to travel with yeah. all of you well, and I, and I kind of look at Janie and say and, you know that's right but anyway, don't, don't but, be afraid to talk with us I, I know it's not exactly the same thing but having a gift that is also a curse I, I I do appreciate that perspective for sure. And certainly if we were to find anything that would help you to control your gift, then uh, I will stand with you and help you to find those answers if that's something you want to do. Yeah. Mm. Well, you can kind of see with all why we don't really want to talk with uh, with Captain Braun about this. Oh. If he kind of knew how difficult we had with a bit of with some control issues eh, there's a good chance he might might take the uh, more cautious approach and decide that we're a bigger risk to the ship than we're not or we're not worth the risk to the ship I should say I don't think that that's likely what he would do because if he was going to be super protective of the ship he would throw me off I mean I'm, I'm not going to lie I had to leave my home world I had to leave my people 
uh, to protect my family because of what I was. And then I had to leave my parents because I saw a vision of them being killed if they continued to travel with me. So I don't even know where they are. So if well, he really wanted to protect the ship, he would have thrown me off. But I think he values good people and he thinks that you're good people. And well, um, I'm inherently be- dangerous. So, you know, I'm sure yeah. my past will follow me wherever I go as well. So, yeah, but for the two of you, you can escape your past on the ship. To, but poor Janie here can't escape who she is. Right. And honestly, I can't take that risk. I mean, do you if, think uh, that I lose the uh, if I lose the ship, I lose my best chance to uh, find what I need. She reset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I think that Braun, if anything, would probably feel motivated to help you research ways to help your sister. But I mean, it, it is absolutely your decision to make. You guys have to decide if you want to share with him or not. So, and you have to feel yeah. more comfortable with it too. So. If you're not ready for that, then you're not ready for it. Uh, it's not so much a matter of comfort as much as it is a matter of practicality. If we can get uh, things, if we can get her abilities a little more under control, I'll see about talking to the captain then, maybe. But yeah. till then, yeah. I kind of look at Janie and say, like, what's your feeling on this? This has been a lot in one day, and... And telling you what we've told you is very hard for me. Mm-hmm. I must say that knowing that I have someone with me that knows the burden of a second life is comforting. Yeah. Matisse, when we were on the space station, you recalled the past. Do you think you could help me recall the events that led to my accident? I can try that if it's um, something the, that has an emotion associated with it. Right, but Greg, it doesn't. It doesn't quite work that way. Um, basically, it, it's yeah. It's like if if some if there's a strong emotion associated with a physical place. I mean, oh, it's it sounds like we're having a uh, an adventure back to my home. Do we need to do it? Oh, that's going to be <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> If okay, so for example, if if you went on the if you went on the on the deck of the ship and you used that, you would see the fight you just had, mm-hmm. because there was a strong, right. super strong emotion with Janie during the fight. Mm-hmm. So so, when, whenever you use that power, it is like you looking, have to be in a place. You you have to yeah. be in a place, and you're basically looking back in time at that exact spot where you were standing. But again, that doesn't preclude that maybe we might not be able to go back to where she came from. And I might not be able to see that, though. Well, um, I guess I I just want to make sure you understand how the power works. I mean, I'll try to work with you guys, depending on what you decide to do, because it might be kind of fun to try to see if we can use your power in a way that it wasn't necessarily intended. As an out, as an out of game, I wasn't intending him to do it right now. It was just like I thought it would yeah. be a cool thing for her to ask. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, mean, I mean, just him that, that's fine. I, I just don't is. want Greg to give misinformation. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just just him being as just maybe has like uh, some like meditation or calming tricks or something like that. Yeah. You know, just some or it could be that it's something that maybe Matisse character. said that at some point, sometime, she doesn't have control over it. Mm-hmm. That it might happen for her and she might be able to do that for her, which is what I was what I was kind of getting at. Okay. Yeah. He, he yeah. got what I was putting down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> special things could happen or if it's place based, like maybe if we don't want to put ourselves in danger going back to Hobgoblin land, then <laughs> yeah, who's to say that there isn't another place that we could research that might still be able to connect us to other locations in a safer way. Okay. That's the DM. Right. So, to him. So, so if there's if, if there's some yeah. if there's some way that Matisse can help, you'll she will certainly try. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. So yeah, I kind of say you know it's wow. the desire for family. I know you guys left your people, and I've left mine, and we've been on the run for all this time. Like I, I really hope that this ship is a place where we can kind of, at least for me and Matisse, kind of start another family with people we can trust but still be safe and keep the people we care about safe 
you know. Well, we'll Ron see seems how supportive that goes. of that, at least for our part. So, yeah. Well, Do you appreciate hear it. I'll we'll see how that goes. But yeah, now on to more pressing business. What's this fish? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yes, Greg, I, I do hear a little bit of a high-pitched... Uh, yeah, there's a whistle. I don't, I don't know, know if know. it's... <laughs> it, 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 was, it was Sarah's thing yeah. being frozen. Oh, the kitty ears. Oh, she popped again. <laughs> poof, poof. Oh, the, okay, there Three she is. <laughs> All right, we, we got Sarah so, back. So I don't know a lot about the fish other than there's this giant fish-looking object trapped in a wall of ice that uh, mm. Mayaheen, that's my goddess, thought it was important enough that we should go check it out. Well, if it sounds fishy, it sounds right up our alley. So let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that, Jane. We're going to need some fire. <laughs> we may need our cold weather gear. Who do, you, who, we, who do we know who could use fire? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I'm I sorry. I don't, I don't want to. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, that Dude, was poorly Dude. timed. I apologize, Jane. You made Janie cry. <laughs> <laughs> or if you start to cry. <laughs> Can he cry? Uh, it's too much crying in here. Oh, like, the, stere- like the stereotype. If you guys the figure it out, let me know. No. <laughs> Tease doesn't cry like that. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay so, cry. so, uh, <laughs> so it takes, it takes half a day okay. and, uh, the ship, um, uh, approaches the planet from a distance. The planet appears to be covered in clouds. Uh, the Star Runner reaches the planet and enters the upper atmosphere. It's usually pretty cold in the upper atmosphere of a planet, but the air around you bites into your skin with a cold you have never felt. The temperature rises slightly as the ship descends, but the air is still very cold. Captain Braun has Quartermaster Olo get furs for the entire uh, crew to wear. And Arveen, as the Star Runner approaches within um, half a mile of the planet's surface, uh, Mayaheen's influence directs you which way to go. Okay. So you, rel- you relay this information to Hal, yeah. and after another hour of travel, the Star Runner arrives near a large um, ice cave that is located on the side of a mountain. So Hal hovers the ship. Um, just over the icy surface of the planet, and a rope ladder is lowered um, for the party to, to disembark. And okay. uh, Captain Braun uh, says, Well, uh, good luck. Uh, Hal will relay information from you to me uh, as usual, and uh, um, let us know what you find. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, do. Thank you. So. Okay, so you all uh, so you did, did we have Maze sing to us? Yes, oh, yes, okay. uh, yes. Cool. Maze, uh, Maze entertains you very, very, very well. Sing to my song. <laughs> With his outrageous <laughs> accent. He is outrageous. Uh, three. Uh, three, three temporary hit points. Three. Three temporary hit points. Three. Okay. <laughs> one, um, two, yeah. pause three. Pause for just one second. I want and, to check he, and you guys have had a long rest, so don't forget you've had a long rest. Oh, John, Action, John is checking something. Oh. Yay for spell slots! Uh, What's going on, John? Uh, I just want to—I want to check on a uh, something that I might want to do while we're en route. Okay. That might come and uh, pause for a second while John Andy. checks on stuff. Let's see. I gotta say, when you guys play on Zoom, you role play awesome. <laughs> 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 well, you, you gave us a good. Uh, yeah, we had some. The door, tea. the door it. opened. We really had good vehicles for it. Whereas I think before we really would have been much more withdrawn and secretive, just because we were newer to each other. Yeah, I, I did. I did. Yeah. My my hope at this adventure was that I would be able to get some deep role playing out of it, and yeah. I'm happy that I was able to facilitate that. And, mm-hmm. and you guys did great. Yeah. There's <laughs> still quite some more to tell too. Yeah. <laughs> We're just, we're just scratching the surface. Yes. <sighs> there are some real emotions going there, man. I know. <laughs> some of them were yours. We got the yes, DM and the feels. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I am probably going to regret this, but. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, okay. boy. Uh, while we're en route, 
you know, considering I'm knowing that uh, we're heading to an ice planet, the best that I can do at the moment, I'm going to uh, kind of uh, uh, take my little modifications that I did uh, to my black powder pistol and take them off okay. and grab kind of an old jar and start playing around with that a little bit. Okay. Uh, Make like a firebomb. Yep. I'm going uh, removing my infusion from my black powder pistol. So it's just a regular black powder pistol now. Sure. Um, and create an alchemy jug. Okay. Make an alchemy jug. Got it. So. Boom, okay. boom, pow. Because one of the things the alchemy jug can make is acid, which is nice. Uh, uh-huh. Interesting. Okay. Is there anything else that anyone um, uh, wanted to do during during the the travel there, or kind of just pick up from where we were at? I put a coat on because I'm cold. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the captain weather. the captain has furs <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. So. A seven foot tall fur. Uh, yours is yours is, doesn't fit quite as well as everybody else's. We can sew two together for you or something. A fur mini skirt. <laughs> you just gotta find a tauntaun and use your laser sword to cut it open <laughs> and get inside. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, John, are you good? I'm good. Go okay. for it. All right, so uh, the cave itself is 60 feet tall by 30 feet wide. Uh, From outside the cave, you can see that it narrows into darkness as it moves further into the mountain. So how would you like to uh, proceed? I mean, I mean, you see this, you see this cave in front of you, it goes Mm -hmm. into the mountain and, and the natural ambient light basically starts to fade as it grows inside. Obviously, it's, it, there's no light source now, inside. Now, is it rock or is it ice that's making this cave? Um, you think that basically it's a mountain covered in okay. ice and snow. Okay. And, and, and it, I mean, a big part of the opening of the cave is ice sort of encrusted around the outside of the opening okay. in the side of the mountain. But there's rocks, so it seems like it's more stable and relatively There, there okay. is a lot of rock, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, is there anything that we could hear from inside the cave, standing at the outside, or is it too loud? Um, if, if you want to approach the, 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 the mouth of the cave and make perception checks based on hearing, you can okay. do that. All right. I'll do that. Oh. Uh, perception. Oh, I'm good at perception. I'm me at perception. I am not great today. I got my passive. Oh, uh, no. Passive for me. 14. Seven passive for me. Twenty. Uh, three. Nice. Yes, Drax. Are we all perceptive buying? Yes, yeah. please. So, Greg, what's your passive? Thirteen, and I got a seven. <laughs> okay, so 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 thirteen from Matisse and and Arvine was what? Fourteen. My, 14. my passive. Yeah. Strax was twenty. Thirteen passive. Thirteen passive from Jenny. Okay. I rolled a three. <laughs> uh, whoopsie. <laughs> Um. Hmm. So you got a twenty strax. That's pretty good. So you're standing at the mouth of the cave. Um. You can hear. I mean, it's it's a little bit windy. Um. You know, there's there's there there's wind blowing. You know, it's it's very cold wind blowing, and and there's like you know gusts of snow moving around, and um. It's 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 hard to make out. You're listening very very closely, and you think you hear the sound of movement, um, but it's it's in the form of like of like sort of like a cracking, crunching kind of a sound. It's very so, subtle. It's very hard to pick up with with the wind blowing. So it's not the, rhythmic like footprints. It's just more of a kind of a constant. It's it's not constant. It's very intermittent. I mean, you, you hear you hear this like crackly crunch kind of a noise, and you and you stop and you try to focus even harder on the source, and then like after a few more seconds, you hear another little crunch and crack, and then and then nothing for a little while. Mm. So so I mean, if it was more steady, you would think it was something that was constantly occurring, but because it has this weird intermittency to it, you're not quite sure what to make of it. Hmm. Okay. I'd stay on your guard. There's uh, 
I think there's something in there, but okay, hard to tell what. All right. Okay. So how do draw, you uh, proceed? If it's, uh, uh, I'll draw one of my swords just to have it ready, but otherwise, okay. Draw a okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so Strax is saying exercise caution. Okay. So. Um, I'll Dude. I'll keep my halberd at the ready. This okay. Time. okay, halberd at the ready. Wakazashi at the ready. Matisse. So, laser sword. Laser sword out and on. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is is, is the laser sword a light source? Um, I haven't I, I haven't said it was a light source. I mean, I would probably say that if you were in a pitch black room, you could see the sword, but yeah. it wouldn't actually shed light beyond that. It it, it doesn't actually illuminate. Yeah. No. Is the okay. cave dark enough where we think we're going to need light sources? Yes. Okay, I'll cast light on the one Wakazashi. Well, let's ask this. Is there anybody in the party who does not have dark vision? <laughs> Me. Yeah. Or just just Jane. Okay. okay. So. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'll put so, the light on. So you have light on the sword? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so you make your way into the cave, and... Um, as you start to go inside, you start to see it keeps on narrowing to the point where um, basically the cave walls form a 10-foot, kind of like a an uneven, jagged 10-foot wide passage that goes deeper into the mountain. Okay. Should we set a marching order? Um, you, you can, but um, before you do that, okay. Yep. Okay. so a, as you're approaching the passage inside the cave, yep. um, the ice explodes upward from behind you. Oh, um, and standing there, you see a large a bipedal monster with white, hairless skin and long claws. Oh. Uh, it advances toward the party. And for the listeners, we will be sandboxing this fight since we're playing over Zoom. A sandbox encounter happens only in the minds of the players without the aid of our usual maps and miniatures. So players, roll initiative. Yeah. That ain't guys, no fish. Are you, guys, <laughs> you guys are not surprised. Because of Strax warning. Okay. So there was no surprise round for the monster. All right. Not terrible, not great. Oh. So, FYI, <sighs> the, uh, um, let's see, uh, uh, SD01 cannot be surprised. Okay. Uh, Ooh. Did I, did I put that in, um, in GHADH's stat block? I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, let me check. Uh, yes, GH88 is also vigilant. Okay. Alright, so uh, let's see. Initiative for Matisse. Seven. <laughs> Seven. What is it with you, the sevens tonight? <laughs> Seven. Is that, is that a cat? Seven. No, that was me almost knocking the water down. Oh, that was bad. That would have been vein? bad. Twelve. Mr. Spike is on the table Jamie? for some reason. Uh, 12. He's hanging out with you. Uh, what's your dex mod, Jeannie? Uh, mine's plus two. I'm sure hers is higher. Yeah, plus four. Okay. Yeah. And She's tracks. a dex fighter. Ten. Ten. Well, it, everyone's pretty close. Yeah. All right. And the monster. Arr. Arrgh. 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 I'm pretty sure this is this is what I was hearing. Uh, yes, you think so. Um, yeah. Greg, what is your dex mod, Greg? Um, dex modifier is plus two. Okay. Uh, reset. Okay, well, I didn't roll very high on initiative, so. Um, all right, so the initiative Whoa. order... The initiative order. My ears is, are sweating. <laughs> <laughs> the initiative order is uh, Arvine, our awesome our fighter. Wow. Janie, our clash star sorcerer. Then Strax, our, hob- our hobgoblin artificer. And Matisse, our diva paladin. And yes. then the uh, ice monster. Yay! I am not last. Uh, I bet he ice doesn't monster, like you say. I bet he doesn't like Faiwa. Faiwa? Ice <laughs> monster, you say. Interest. <laughs> right, so, Arvine, our Asimar fighter, you are first. Okay. All right. So. Bring your critical. Draw the second sword. Uh, I mean, is the guy like right next to us? Oh, How far God. away is he? Yeah, he's like 15 feet away. Okay. Uh, so I will run up to him. 
Uh, let's see here. And I'm going to use a bonus action to... Eh, what am I going to do? Yeah, I'll use a bonus action to give myself uh, advantage on the attack with my samurai ability. Ability. And that gives me also... Uh, do, 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 do. Gives me five temporary hit points, so now I will have five instead of three. Right, Chris? It's that you never go higher than the highest value you've been given. Correct. So five. All right, so I will swing on it with advantage with a wakazashi. Uh, where did I put my other d6? Can I put my d6 back here? Critical! <laughs> Oh my god! Nice. <laughs> on, on the big blue die. <laughs> and Kate <laughs> is bringing her critical. <laughs> the criticals. The criticals. Criticals. Oh, right on the second. Yeah, last shot with the waka uh, six. I would like eight. to point for the record that all my big die are sitting on twenties today. The left. So that is gonna be a twelve. Twelve slashing. Twelve. All right, you slice through its leg. Uh, she'll use an action point to do another attack since she's got this advantage right now. One, two, three, four, advantage. five. Because okay. she has what? Advantage. Because she used her samurai ability, she oh, has right, advantage right. on all yep. attacks this turn. I thought you said disadvantage. No, I, I, I said this advantage, and I realized right as I said it that it the wouldn't sound, sound right. right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Wait, so wait. Stop that. Gonna hit silly. for AC uh, 18. No, what? For eight slashing uh, damage. Eight. eight is great for and eight. And I think we'll call it at that. I don't want to waste my action surge right. just yet. You slash so. it in the leg and then slash it in the stomach. And then okay. it is Janie, our Kalashdar sorcerer. Um, how far is it? 15 feet from you. Okay. Can I move within the space of a 15-foot cone that wouldn't burn my friends? Yes. Okay. Burning eight. Burning eight. Burning, Burning hands. hands. FTW. Burning hands. Dex saving throw, please. 18. Fuck. Oh, jeez. He still takes half. It still takes half. Hold on. Uh, Come on, big money. No Three, whammy, six, no whammy. Stop. Going level one, so loaf. Three, six, seven, so three fire. Three fire. That wasn't good damage. That's okay. It, it it's, it, it's still <laughs> it's still relevant to something that has to do with this creature. So, oh. Um, okay. So you so you you burn it. It kind of tries to move out of the way. It takes a little bit of a little bit of damage, and then it is uh, Strax Hobgoblin Artificer. <sighs> All right, I am once again going to do something stupid because that's right. Oh here. boy! Oh, John! Because that's what John does, <laughs> <laughs> and we love him for it. So, mm. so, because I like playing with my toys, I am going to actually grab my alchemy jug mm -hmm. and tell it to produce oil. Okay. Um, ah, I, just, I was just looking up the rules on oil. I can uh, make a, uh, um, I can splash a creature with oil um, that is within five feet of me if I make a ranged attack on it. So hmm. I'm going to try to see if I can get myself into a position where I can get uh, a, uh, flanking with Arvine. Yes. Yes. So you cancel that out. But hold on a second. It, it, this is very interesting because it says you have to be within five feet to make a ranged attack, which would give you disadvantage in a ranged attack. Let, yeah, I know, that's why I wanted the uh, flanking. To let me read you the whole attack. thing. Oil usually comes in a clay flask that holds one pint. One pint is exactly how much I can make. As an action, you can splash the oil in this flask onto a creature within five feet of you, or throw it up to twenty feet, shattering it on impact. Make a ranged attack against a target creature or object, treating the oil as an improvised weapon. That's weird. Okay. So on a it, hit, the target is covered in oil. 
It almost feels like they didn't write the attack for splashing it. It should be a separate thing. What, what is the sense. what is the effect? Like, like if you were to, if you were to hit it with a range attack, what is the effect? The effect is it is covered in oil, and then if it takes fire damage, it takes an additional five fire damage. Further from in the other vertical. words, you light the oil on fire. Yeah. Okay. So the way that I am interpreting Don't that cocktail. is that <laughs> if you are adjacent to it, mm-hmm. you just throw it on. If you're not adjacent, you have to make a range uh, range attack roll. Okay. So no attack. Right. You just do so it. So no attack. I just splash. As long as you're within five feet of it. If you get adjacent to it, you can do that. If you're not, you have yeah. to make yeah. a ranged attack. You're well, I will have to get a dash because I am not throwing it. my uh, I'm not throwing my alchemy jug. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to break his alchemy jug. <laughs> right. That's pretty cool, though. Is it already on fire? Yes, yeah, nothing worse oh, than breaking uh, jugs. So Strax moves up to it, and he, he opens up that jug and splashes oil all over it. That's okay. wicked cool. Um, I will then... Okay. I, I assume you're not getting into flanking for that. Uh, I don't really need to get into flanking no. for that. No. Yeah, it leaves it open no. for Matisse. But, but if, if, if Arvine and you are on, are on two sides of it, then other people can move in to flank with yeah. the two of them. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm actually um, actually for my uh, bonus action. I am actually going to move the steel defender in. Yeah. To okay. Good shit, man. So at least I get an attack in. So we'll say that he's <laughs> flanking with um, with you. We'll say. Okay. Don't go break in yeah. my drugs. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> flanking, sir. You mean your jugs? Yes, oh, that's what I just said. Don't go, don't go break in the jugs. <laughs> I like John's I jugs. Carrying, I was carrying uh, my, I my like cans my around too. the kitchen the other yeah. day. <laughs> John has nice jugs. Uh, hey, Sarah, are we going to need 20? to leave space for you to do that cone attack again? Sorry, John's taking his turn oh, there. Sorry. Sorry. AC, tw- yeah. AC 22. AC 22 with the steel defender, yep. For, for five force damage. And it said, um, you, don't, you don't have to... You don't have to light them up. I will on my next turn. <laughs> okay, so the steel defender bites into its leg, okay. and then is that your turn, John? That uh, so, yep, that is my turn. Okay, GHAD8 uh, is still on. Is on, on standby. Uh, okay. Uh, yep. On. Um, so then, uh, Matisse, if you want to step into dodge. flanking with RV, right. you can do that. I will do that, and I will prepare a laser sword attack. Laser sword. Uh, it's going to be 15 to hit. Uh, 15 to hit. You do connect. And that is going to be for 12 damage. 12 damage. And I'm going to action point to do another single attack. Okay, so so you you bash on it with your laser sword, take some damage, and then you're going to attack again. Yes. All right, let's do it. Critical. Yeah. Oh, critical to laser Bring sword. your criticals. All right. You want to lay a smite on that there? I sure is. Woohoo. So that I roll three dice with that. Um, yeah, three three d eight because your normal laser sword is a d eight, and then two for the normal smite if you're doing level one, right? Yeah. I, I so 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 you're smiting, right? Yes. So that's three d eight and then three d eight. Oh, so it's six. It's six, correct? Six yeah. D8, yeah. I have just so happened to have six. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty sexy. <laughs> Okay. So the divine power of Mayheen flows through you and into your laser sword. <laughs> that could go so many different ways. <laughs> <laughs> you pierce it with your laser sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> sword. <laughs> All right, so three. I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Five. <laughs> now let's see how well you can ten handle it. Twenty. Twenty-two. Plus, plus your five. Modifier. Yeah. Twenty-seven. Yeah. Oh, Ouch. Damn. In a row. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
you 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 channel the div- the the divine power of Mahin and uh, you attack it with the sword, and there's a huge, gigantic um, <laughs> welt in its back right now. Nice. Stabby, um, stabby, ouch. Is it bloody? Is it bloody? <laughs> that, that hit definitely bloodied it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then it goes, and you actually see that giant welt. You see some of it heal up. Oh. oh. Poop. Really? He took Ooh, fire. Oh, actually, fire? wait. No, wait. Yeah. Jenny, you hit it with fire, right? Yeah. John, I was right there with you. I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you do not see that wealth heal up. <laughs> yeah, fire damage. And that, and that is because of you, Janie. Yay. Okay. Three points for the win. <laughs> <laughs> so it is going to um, bring all of its attacks onto uh, Matisse, who just hit it for all that damage. Oh, tank got a tank. one at disadvantage. All right. Uh, first, first one at disadvantage as the steel yeah, defender gets SG. in the way. All right. Let's see here. First attack. Uh, so it tries to bite you, Matisse. Okay. And it is AC 15. That is going to miss. Uh, okay. And then it is going to try to claw you twice. Okay. First attack is AC 23. That's going to hit. Okay, for uh, 10 slashing. Ooh. Okay. And then second claw. Yikes. That was that was some hefty damage. AC 16. That will miss. That will miss, okay. So that's three attacks. And uh, no regeneration, thanks to Janie. Yeah, Janie. And then it is back up to uh, top of round two, Arvin, our Asimar fighter. Bring your criticals. Ugh. All right. So she's got flanking with you at this point, I think. So Correct. she is going to swing away with her wakazashis. Wakazashi. So that's going to hit for AC 24. That will hit. Uh, that is going to hit for seven slashing. Seven slashing. She's going to swing with the offhand Wakazashi. Ooh, maybe not that one, though. Um, AC 15 to hit. AC 15. You, you cut through it again. Okay. That's going to hit for eight slashing. Okay. Uh... And I think she's going to stop with that because I still feel like I should hold my action surge for later. Okay, two slashes across its side, and yep. you are good. So then it yep. is uh, Janie, our clashed our sorcerer. Okay. Come <sighs> I mean, I only have like the one fire spell. Missiles? I do have magic missiles. Ray of Frost probably won't help here. <laughs> that could have worked. I, don't think. <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> I could probably shock him. Um, I think we're all too close at this point for me to burn hands. So let's magic missile. Magic missile. Magic missile. Sarah, do you also, um, if this part of your spell selection there, do you have, um, do you have firebolt? I do not have firebolt at this time. Okay. Magic missile it is. <clears throat> Magic missile it is. So three darts coming at ya. Level <laughs> one. <laughs> Level one. Level two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For three, four, five, six, seven plus three is ten. Ouchie. Okay, you hit it in the leg and the chest and then in the back of the head and it's it's wobbling. It looks very badly hurt. It's still there. Very badly bend. <laughs> it's uh, still there. Does it catch on fire? <laughs> From the magic missile, no. Okay. And I Just, did not wild surge. Oh, yay. <laughs> okay, no wild surge. All right. Thank and God. And it is uh, Strax, our hobgoblin artificer. All right. I uh, light him up. Jug. I drop the jug and pull out my smith's hammer. And he dropped jugs? Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and use and kind of 
slam the smith's hammer against the ground, creating sparks, and light a bon and uh, create a bonfire underneath him. <laughs> okay, uh, is that a, a deck save or something? Uh, yep, deck save. Deck save. Okay. Deck save. Uh, he gets a fourteen. Uh, the DC is fourteen. Oh, oh, so he's sixteen. Uh, the bonfire is still Damn underneath it. him, but he doesn't take any damage. Unfortunately, that means he doesn't light on fire either. No, yes. he, dance, he dances around and manages to. Although man, just to move at the start out of, of his out turn, of he's going to have to roll it again, right? Yep. So maybe yeah. he'll start. Yeah. All right. He might still catch on fire. Okay. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, a creature must also make the saving throw when it moves into the bonfire space for the first time or ends its turn. Okay. Oh, so it could move out of the space, but yeah. So it has the opportunity to move out of the space if it wants. It's going to provoke from two people if it does. All right. So next in the initiative order is uh, Matisse, our diva paladin. Okay. With the laser sword. So I still have advantage on my attack. You still have advantage. Yep. Okay. So laser sword attack. It's a kicker. Uh, seventeen to hit. Fifteen does connect, and nice. it's going to be for thirteen. Thirteen. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. You bring the you bring the laser sword down. You smash it right in the face, and you and you cave in its skull, oh. and it falls over dead. Ah, oh, yeah. 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 Killing it blow. In the fire. Which no, I'm going to light it on a fire, fire anyway because yeah, <laughs> and then it lights on fire and it burns. Its body burns <laughs> in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little bad for it. But... No, we don't need that. We don't. We don't need that coming back to haunt us. No, <laughs> not from the the nature crunchy uh, people who are support pedia. Yeah, it's. I I find it very interesting because when you guys fought the Avatar of Death on the space station, it was challenge rating zero and it was kicking the crap out of you guys. <laughs> and and this thing was a solo and it was considered to be to be deadly. Really? And you guys pretty much just pwned it. <laughs> well, if, if he had Great had help. the bottom of the initiative order and then <clears throat> the, that massive smite and yeah. fire, and if he had actually been connecting with his attacks, like without the Steel Guardian imposing disadvantage, that's... Yeah. Yeah. That that hit me for pretty His, his attacks good could amount. take down a person in one turn. Oh, it, it could. It like. could. Yeah. So it, it I, I mean, get why kind of the a, rating it's, is it's there. It's kind of a kind of a swingy monster. It's yeah, just, we were rolling pretty hot too. So. It's just you know, yeah. zero yeah. challenge rating, kicks your butt, deadly thing. You guys pump. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, and good tactics. Yeah. Because we kept yeah. trying to melee the other thing. <laughs> True. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was hittable. It just had an AC twenty. That's all. Yeah. Um, the the avatar of death. <laughs> and we were rolling shit. Um, all right, so I pick, up, um, I pick up the jugs. Well, we're not pick up the jug. Uh, uh, I won't be able to use this until tomorrow, but uh, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, it was a great plan. So, it yeah. was a good try. It's cool. Yeah. All right, and so um, um, you, you got, what do you guys want to do for a marching order as far as that that cave passage? <laughs> it's ten feet wide, so you can so you can be in pairs of two. Probably me and Matisse up front. Uh, I'll okay. take up the rear because apparently things are popping up behind us. So is that what G G H and Janie in the middle, and you want the steel defender back with you? Yeah. So okay. three row. Yeah. I hate okay. it when things pop up in the middle. I mean. <laughs> okay. So we have we have Matisse and Arvine, and then yeah. Janie and G H eighty eight, and then steel defender and Strax. Yep. yep. Okay, and you guys start to make your way down this ten foot passage, and that's where we will end the session. Okay. Uh, that was a good session. That was a really awesome session, everybody. That was really, really great. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that was awesome. And we role played. Yay the for Kevin and the GM cry. <laughs> Considering it's after eleven. Considering I, I, I was, I, I wasn't, put... I wasn't crying. The the microphone smells like onions. All right. <laughs> 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 well, apparently there will not be any video evidence of this, so... Hey, I might post well, this on YouTube. He, he does oh, have the video recording, so... So oh at least we're all wearing pants. Messy yeah. hair, don't care. Nope. <laughs> we're wearing pants? We were supposed to wear pants to this? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, no listeners. Loss. Thank you, listeners. Good night, everybody. Right, thank you, thank listeners. you. I love you. See you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this podcast, 
please leave us a review anywhere this podcast can be found. Our social media links, plus additional content, can be found on our website at knightsofroleplay.com. Please tell your friends about Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast, and spread the word through social media. Your help and support are greatly appreciated.